Check, check. All right. What's going on, everybody? C4 here today, bringing you the finale of the North Dakota Bison Dynasty. Maybe I should have a finale. I thought this is only episode five or whatever. There's a bunch of questions that need to get an, an, an answered here real quick. First of all, the finale. Yes, it is the finale because I stated in my last video, uh, there's bigger and better things for me to work on in NCAA 14 in relation to next year's Madden game. I think you guys are going to like just as much as this. This year was kind of a tester using a school that hasn't been used before and to see if you guys want to see NCAA content. And you certainly do. And this is not necessarily the the finale of the series as a whole. It's just the finale of season one where you get through all the way through it so that I could, you know, take the time that I'd be doing this and do it towards the next adventure in NCAA. So, as I've stated in the past, for those of you that were hyped that we were using North Dakota State, what I'm using um, for my NCAA Dynasty in the coming months in relation to Madden 18, I have decided to import North Dakota State in the save. So right now, North Dakota State, they're an FCS team. They don't play in college football or in NCAA. But UAB is there. Uh, UAB is a defunct program now just starting to get back. So I figure why not replace it with North Dakota State. So while we're doing everything in relation to the college football video game next year in Madden 18, we will still be able to keep track of our own OGs here in North Dakota State and uh, see what's going on there. Another thing is you may see the 2-5 and five record. We took off before we were 2-1. and one. What happened? Essentially, I was kind of tinkering around today. I thought I made two saves. I made a save from where we last left off, which was our unfortunate defeat to Iowa. And then I tried to mess around with some things. This game, I didn't even know I wasn't paying attention just because I'm so used to Madden. It did it auto saves. So I lost like the video was fucking corrupt. So I basically lost what happened, but you guys don't know the scores and stuff in that game. And essentially, I wasn't playing the games, I was simulating them, so you just missed out on a couple F-bombs and a couple rages. So we will quickly look at all the games we have missed and we'll take over from where we are. And hopefully we can make a late season push with, I'm pretty sure, our schedule's all conference opponents uh, and try to win the title. And lastly, and absolutely lastly, what we need to do is, while this is going on, the NFL Top 100, the top 10 names are going down. Uh, when I was last checking, Matt Ryan got number 10. We could talk about that during this live stream. So feel free to, you know, when you guys are watching it, because I only have so many monitors, I'm not physically watching it. Uh, we can talk about it in the live chat. And the very last thing, before we jump into just a breakdown, before we get ready for our Week 10 matchup, this is Day 366. There's been 365. A year ago from today, I stated I was going to take YouTube seriously. And I've had daily uploads for 365 days. I don't know if there's another Madden YouTuber in particular that's had a daily upload for a year straight. If there is, I haven't seen one. So, thank you guys for your support. It makes me, you know, days I want to do shit. This here is, you might be thinking, you know, why is, first of all, it's going off for three fucking minutes. Why is he talking so long? Um, because there's a lot of stuff we get out of the way. But essentially, because of my daily uploads, I was working on this to be a regular upload. But my kid got his four-month, um, his four-month needles today. So, I, I started recording it. Then we had to go get his needles. He wasn't feeling too good after that. Everything's fine now. But I was just too preoccupied to make this a regular upload. So I said, fuck it. We're going to live stream. And we're going to talk about the NFL Top 100. As tomorrow night, I will be streaming C4 Podcast Episode 2. Where I give my own personal Top 100 rankings. The list is done. I hope you guys are going to like it. Because we can go with the reactions in the chat. But without further ado, we're going to catch up on all the games. And then we can look at the chat and do the regular stream. So, that being said. The last time we were here, we lost 17-12 to to Iowa. A very you know, tight game, I would say. We almost came back late, but unfortunately, we got defeated. Uh, week three, we had a bye. So in week four, we put it up against FCS East competition. So formerly, we were SEC t or, uh, FCS team. Looking at the game summary here, uh, at least from uh, from North Dakota State standpoint, player of the game on the defensive side of the ball was Greg Maynard. Five tackles. I think he had four sacks. Uh, Easton Stick, 219, one touchdown, two interceptions. Our boy, King Frazier, 29 touches for 131 yards. Uh, receiving big day from the tight end Jeff Eels for 87 yards. Erzendowski, our boy, got a touchdown as well. As I said, on the defensive side of the ball, uh, Maynard with... Oh, he only had two sacks. He had 10 tackles, five tackles uh, assisted. Okay, let's, let's get this right here. Bring it back. 10 tackles, four tackles for loss, and two sacks on the day. But very close. Usually, in this, if you play NCAA 14, you blow up the FCS teams. So when I saw that this game was kind of close, got a little worried. Got a little worried. So then in week five, we took on UTEP, 
And those of you guys that follow me on Twitter know my personal feelings about UTEP. I fucking hate UTEP. I hate UTEP with a passion. But they beat us 23-17. to 17. Those of you who know the story behind the UTEP know the players that I dislike. And they had big games. Um... I mean, Easton Stick, I mean, again, you know, not bad. 154 yards, one touchdown, running the ball. King Frazier wasn't really that effective. Uh, we had uh, Darius Shepard, our top wide receiver, 84 yards and a touchdown. Defensive side of things, uh, G. Tucker, 11 total tackles. that had a pick as well. But looking at UTEP, who gives a fuck with the quarterback? Aaron Jones had 32 touches for 120 yards and a touchdown. And the other guy that was tripping me, I don't know if they're related or not, but it was this guy, his name's Alvin Jones. I remember on Twitter when he shit-talked me, I said, oh, look, it's Alvin and the chipmunk. Shut the fuck up. He's like an 87 overall, and he had six total tackles. So uh, we kind of got schooled there by UTEP. Maybe that'll be a rivalry that I will continue once we uh, get everything caught up for Madden 18. Then in week six, we had another bye. And in week seven, we took on Auburn, which is, you know, Iowa and Auburn were the two big games. It was close. I mean, Auburn is 2-6, so nothing special, but still SEC defense going up against a newcomer to uh, NCAA FBS competition. A 14-10 ball game, low-scoring affair uh, as per, you know, let's be honest. If you've ever seen an Auburn football game, it's usually pretty goddamn boring. Uh, looking at Auburn, I mean, Sean White, two touchdowns, only had 57 yards passing. Uh, Johnson, the running back, had 100-plus yards defensively. Uh, Davis here, 12 tackles, 3 tackles for loss and a sack. He was all over the place. For North Dakota State, Easton Stick had a touchdown. Wasn't bad. Uh, Frazier, 20, 69 yards. I mean, that's pretty much average for him. Uh, nothing in terms of receiving. And on the defensive side of the ball, good. Uh, Seidel had a decent performance. 5 tackles, a sack and a half, but still a defeat against. Obviously, we're showing we can mingle with some of the big dogs in college football. We, can't, we got bodied by Rice. Did not see this coming. Thought this game was going to be totally open, especially divisional rival. I mean, we should have... Or conference. It's conference. It's not division. Um, look at the game summary. Little Rice. The fuck Rice Owls? That's like the most unintimidating name in the history of friggin' football here. Um, look at that, though. Let's look at the stats here. Rice, went, I mean, they ran the ball really, really well. Quarterback only had 154 yards and a touchdown. But look at that. Jesus Christ, just all out running offense here. Um, nothing much in terms of receiving. I don't even want to look at the defensive line. I remember this one. This guy, Banks, only a 78 overall, had four tackles, three interceptions, two, three of those, or two of those went back for touchdowns. I mean, that might be one of the, We just single-handedly got this guy drafted. This guy just got drafted after his game against North Dakota State. Um, on the North Dakota State side, not, I mean, eats and stick. 183 yards, three touchdowns, four interceptions. I mean, that's pretty goddamn unacceptable. King Frazier, not a bad day with 82 yards. Uh, we got a couple touchdowns there. Uh, Darius Shepard, 77 yards and a touchdown. And defensive side of the ball, Maynard, not, again, a decent performance, but not good enough as we lost that one. And then in week nine, Florida International, you know, a little bit worried about John Smith. He's a draftable. He's currently uh, sixth round, went in the sixth round at the tight end. He was the guy at Florida International that got, like, hot water dumped on his face from his girlfriend. Which is pretty, it's a pretty crazy story if you can look it up. And we lost to Florida International. Are you kidding me? That's not even like a real school. During the day, uh, Easton Stick, 138 yards, one touchdown, one pick. Running the ball, King Frazier had a decent day, 112 yards and a touchdown. Another solid performance from Darius Shepard, 79 yards and a touchdown. And defensively, Stump had a decent day, 11 tackles, a sack, and interception. But Florida International, McGo, their quarterback, 285, four touchdowns, three picks. Running the ball, I mean, he also led the team in rushing touchdowns. Look at this, John U. Smith, the tight end. Six catches, 134 yards, and two touchdowns. We got body. And then, we are now here at Week 10. We were taking on Middle Tennessee State. It's a divisional po opponent. They're 8-1, 5-0 oh within the division. We're 2-5, 0-3 and oh and in the division. And we're not going to seem like this one. We're going to rock and roll, and we're going to try to get our team back into things. So let's do it. Wentz becomes the quarterback. Um, so, yeah, has anyone else watched the top 100? What has happened? Who is, I assume they're probably on number 9 by now. Number 8, number 9. But Matt Ryan coming in at number 10, that's kind of, you know. You're telling me that Odell Beckham and Zeke Elliott are higher than Matt Ryan, the MVP? I think that's, uh, that's kind of fucked, if you're asking me. Dak Prescott, I get I mean, but... You gotta take the list with a gray saw. I mean, personally, I'm baffled that Jordan Hicks, as, I, as an Eagles fan, Jordan Hicks was our best player. Carson Wentz probably was our best player, but overall, 
I mean, you may have to weigh, if you take the quarterback out of it, because quarterback's usually the best. Jordan Hicks was our best guy. And Malcolm Jenkins, Brandon Graham, and Fletcher Cox all made that list. I may have had Brandon Graham on that list. I probably wouldn't have Fletcher Cox that high uh, if you were basing it off of performance last year. I get the whole, you know, you got to regard the player overall, the body work. That's why AP and J.J. Watt and all those guys make it. But Jordan Hicks should have been on that list. He was like the number one cover linebacker, and it was like, wasn't even close. Matt Ryan is overrated. He won the MVP, though. Cam Newton is overrated. He won the MVP, and he was number one last year. I don't want to say that there's any racial racial things going on in the list, but that's something to consider. Matt Ryan's stats were probably as good as uh, Le'Veon Bell, number nine. That makes sense. I see people with the suspension and stuff. Number nine. David, like David Johnson should be top 10. I'm going I'm to tell you right now, David Johnson wasn't top 10 in my top 100, which you guys hopefully can tune in tomorrow and watch. Uh, he was a lot better. So here we go. Take it on. Middle Tennessee State. They got Richie James at the wide receiver spot. Remembered him from uh, Toronto Husky fame. I got a new controller for Xbox. Hopefully I can kick field goals now. What's up, everybody? Bell's number nine. Do you think Nelson Aguilar is actually going to produce in games after hearing all of his praise this offseason? Um, it's really tough to say because Nelson Aguilar's problem has never been, you know, he's always had probably the best route running on the team. He's, he's plenty athletic. It's just the drops. So drops are the kind of thing that, oh, get the toe tie off oh, drop pass. If you drop, like I can see Nelson Aguilar Killing it in the fucking preseason. Having four good games. Everyone's like, holy shit, he's turned a leaf. And all it takes is in week one. Have one bad drop at home. People get on him. And then it's the vicious cycle over again. I hope for sake it doesn't. I mean, there's a certain fan. We're not going to name names. Oh, Kick Frazier gets the edge. There we go. Nice run there. There's a certain fan within our fan base that loves to shit on players. I don't want my players to do bad. I honestly, if it's one of those things where people are like, man, can you imagine if that piece of shit Aguilar does better? It's like, I fucking hope he does. I'm cheering for him to have his, the best season he can do. Le'Veon Bell lower than Elliott. Yeah, that is, that's pretty bad. Oh my god. Throw it in front of the line of scrimmage. I, I hope to god they make this game reverse compatible sooner than later. I don't think they will. But, uh,. You never know. And Jordan Howard wasn't he on the list yet. Brent Stocks, he's a good quarterback. Milt Tennessee's no joke. They're actually like a solid school. Like, they're going to be a team next year. They're probably going to win me a lot of money. I don't know about you guys, but I bet a lot on college football. I think Middle Tennessee's they're going to win in the Central USA. They're going to win some games. Like, Middle Tennessee are the kind of team... Oh, oh my God, come on. Oh, Jesus. He's not even a fucking dual threat QB. Just letting him get, fuck off. You blew that up in the backfield. They put OBJ ahead of, they're probably, like I said, I have a gut feeling. I have no, uh, no real proof. I just think that if I'll top one out, even though they say it's by the players, I wouldn't be surprised if it's by like the players' agents. Like, all right, he got paid. So that means, you know, Odell's waiting on a new contract. Let's put Odell a couple points higher than usual. Favorite Florida player of all time? Tebow. I have a Tebow jersey. It's the only... For the love of God, learn how to fucking stop the read option. Two times we should have that quarterback for a loss of 10. This is bullshit. J.J. Watt was 35 after play. Yeah, even J.J. Watt tweeted. He's like, this list sucks. I didn't even play. I'm going to tell you right now, guys, in my top 100, J.J. Watt didn't make it. I think there's only... Assuming you don't... Oh, my God. Maynard's a beast off the edge. He's getting constantly pressured back there. Um, there's only two players that were hurt last year that made the list. I'm going to tell you right now. It's Gronk and Justin Houston. Assuming you don't count, like, Luke Keekley and stuff. But, yeah. J.J. Watt didn't make the list. Adrian Peterson didn't make my list. Are they at... Uh... Wait, wait. Someone say... Okay, let me know where they're on number eight. Like I said, we're working. OBJ is number eight. That's that's ridiculous. 
He didn't even have better. What do you have? Did he even have better stats than Mike Evans last year? I think Mike Evans. I think he had like a hundred more yards than Mike Evans. Mike Evans had like two more touchdowns. Odell Beckham Jr. As much as I hate him, Odell's probably at least top twenty. I'd probably have personally Odell between fifteen and twenty. I don't know where he's. I'm gonna get my list here and see kind of where I have him. Uh. I'm going to say I have Odell. Yeah, Odell on my list is between 15 and 20. I think that's a fair spot to have. All he does is run slants. He has one famous catch, and he's just, you know, lethal. He's pretty much me at Madden. Just run slants, baby. Doug, Ball Doug Baldwin is pretty underrated. I'm going to say on my top 100 list, I had Doug Baldwin uh, higher than what they did. Or lower. Lower would be the proper term. He is pretty underrated, considering, I mean, he is the number one target. But he's definitely not talked about as much because that is Russell Wilson's team. You clowning if Watt isn't on the list. It's how you define your list. My thing is if they're hurt, what were you doing before you got hurt? And J.J. Watt, was, I think he played four games and he had a sack and a half. That is not bad at all. Don't get me wrong. But Justin Houston played four games and he had like, or Justin Houston played five games and he had four sacks and like 30 tackles, something crazy like that. So it's like, I'm a big fan of J.J. Watt. Don't get me wrong. J.J. Watt, he was my pick for MVP two years ago when Matt Ro or when uh, Aaron Rodgers won it. J.J. Watt was the MVP of the league. And he's one of my favorite players. But he played one, like two games last year. It wasn't like he played three games and he had three sacks, two forced fumbles, and did, wreaked havoc. He wasn't even really doing that good. I have an IDP fantasy league, and J.J. Watt was my defensive end. And he was not doing shit all. He was getting double teamed like a motherfucker. Great block there. But um, how how do you put JJ Watt ahead? Like who like a top defensive end that was left? But this way, how do you put JJ Watt? If you look at the top one hundred, you're telling me that what JJ Watt did last year was better than Jordan Howard, who was second in the league in running. You're telling me it was better than what Eric Weddle did. Eric Weddle had a crazy season. It just wasn't. Houston is good as J.J. Watt. I wouldn't go that far. They're different types of players. I think, you know, well, they're just different type of players. What do you want? I think J.J. Watt's better. I wouldn't say as good, but uh, I think my hot take is that I think Justin Houston's as good as uh, that guy in Denver. Oh, Derry Shepard. Ooh. I think Justin Houston, when healthy, is as good as Von Miller. I, think, I personally think Von Miller... Might be my most overrated player. And that's still... He's definitely an elite talent. Probably top five defender. But I think there's a big margin between Khalil Mack, J.J. Watt, Luke Keekley than, than a lot of people do. Other people do. The running game... It is. Oh, yeah. And I, I remember you asked. Did I have to... I certainly did up the slides. It was in uh, against Iowa. Struggled immensely. I, what I know is already when I up the sides is my wide receivers drop a lot of fucking passes right now. Pretty much we're an all running team. Is Clowney on your list over Watt? Yes, he is. Clowney had a better season last year than Watt. Like I said, that's where that's where my list is different than what you're gonna get in the NFL. You had to do something last year, and JJ Watt didn't really do a whole lot because of injury. Clowney, on the other hand, was second team All Pro. Was a havoc. Kind of similar to what Brandon Graham was in Philadelphia. Didn't get the crazy sack numbers, but pressures against the run. Let's go. King Frazier gets in. The underdogs, North Dakota State. Let's go. This game's better than Madden 7. This game here is the best football game. I remember someone, I don't know if they're watching, asked me on Twitter. Like, is this game worth getting an Xbox 360 or a PS3? It is. This is the best football game Probably on the market right now. It wasn't even the best NCAA game. I think NCAA 13, 12 or 13 was the best in the series. But this is still a really good game. Houston is a four-dimensional player. Coverage runs not Okay, well, let's not act like he's great in coverage. He's certainly not a liability. But J.J. Watts... The con JJ Watt is the kind of guy that can, you know, you can fucking put him on offense. He's an elite athlete. 
That's good against the run and the pass. You can't drop into coverage because it's apples and oranges. That's like saying, oh, man, you know who's better than J.J. Watt? Oh, my God. Like Marcus Peters because he got eight interceptions and J.J. Watt didn't have any. I just think for what you want for an outside linebacker and what you want for a defensive end, uh, J.J. Watt fits more schemes, maybe, if you will. But Justin Hughes is a beast, man. A lot of people forget that it was only, what, two years ago, three years ago, and Justin Hughes had like 20-some sacks. He was a freak. I tend to see body work for a player as a few years deep, but I see where you're at. Yeah, it's, 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 you need to be defined. That's the problem with the NFL top 100. No one knows what they're going for. If you're saying, like, that's what, even when the players, they show the players that are voting, like, man, what's this for? This for, like, all, like, oh my God, this guy, what is his elusiveness? Um, they don't even know. They're like, man, he didn't play last year. We can't give him a vote. Like, if this was voting on the top 100 players that played in 2017, J.J. Watt's still fucking top 10 easy. But if this is the best top 100 players from 2017, like, it's the wording. And I think that should be how you vote on these guys. Boom, tack me on the last scrimmage. I re uh, rebought 360 for this game in Team Builder. Man, it's fucking awesome. This is such a good game. When I found out that my capture software would record it, I felt like a dickhead because I could have been playing this, like, through all Madden 17, Madden 16... I would have been, I had a really good Miami Hurricanes dynasty. I'd probably be in episode like 600 of it. There we go. Good tackle from the line of scrimmage. 12, definitely. That was good. Who's your favorite player to watch in college or the NFL? My favorite player to watch? I'm going to be honest. Lamar Jackson, is in the college at least, is my favorite player. He is the fastest player I've seen at quarterback. And I've seen a lot of Michael Vick. Or not. Oh, Duke DeLuca! What a beast. Hold him to a field goal, I think. The only problem is I'm not going to be... Oh, uh, they're going for it? Shit. Alright, let's go. Cover to sink. Hopefully we can get some pressure. I'm going to watch. They're probably going to do some goddamn read option bullshit. Come on. <laughs> Easy! Too easy. What's your expectation for Jabril Peppers this season? Uh, I think it'll be all right. I don't. I don't really know what the the consensus expectation is. I don't think his coverage ability is ready to start in the NFL. But they're gonna gimmick him. He'll play offense. He'll play a little bit of defense. And he's on not a very good defense. Oh, 70, get your block. Man, I wish I was using this because I would 100% draft King Frazier with uh, my Eagles in 2017 or bad in 18. Sorry. You think he's going to play Will? You think he's going to be a linebacker? I think, yeah, he probably could. I mean, Mark Barron had a lot more NFL experience before he got put in at linebacker. I mean, he had, what, two seasons with the Bucks at safety, and then they brought him in. I don't know if they'll make that transition right away for a rookie. But, I mean, if you're trying to hide his lack of coverage ability and just having a playmaker out there, that, that definitely could work. Zeke is number seven. That's a fucking joke. Zeke Elliott at number seven. Ezekiel Elliott had 16 touch. Give me this shit. Ezekiel Elliott last year. I have to get off the game, the commentary here. Last season, Ezekiel Elliott had 1,900 rushing yards, or 1,900 yards from scrimmage, and he had 19 touchdowns. David Johnson had 2,100 yards from scrimmage, and he had 20 touchdowns, and a way, way shittier offensive line. Le'Veon Bell had 1,800 yards from scrimmage in like 12 games. There is no way, there's no realm that Zeke Elliott is better than Le'Veon Bell and David Johnson. There's no way. Oh, look at Ace's stick. What a play. Let's go. Who's going to be number one? Tom Brady. Tom Brady's number one. He should be number one. You don't do what Tom Brady did after suspension. And then what he did in the playoffs and what he did in the Super Bowl. He's number one. Oh, toe tap. There we go. Darius Shepard. Underrated.
Well, yeah, back to the kind of the point where you talk about what a player did for you in 2017 versus putting guys like Adrian Pearson and J.J. Watt on. It's like, I mean, you left off. You had to leave off Jordan Howard. Eric Weddle wasn't on there. Personally for me, Jordan Hicks wasn't on there, which was dumb. Like, yeah. Honestly, Matt Ryan... Where's Matt Ryan on my list? Ugh. I'm going to say Matt Ryan is not that much better than number 10 on my own rankings. But I more so when you look at... Oh, what a route! Get in there. C4 special to end the half. Let's go. 14 nothing. 2-5 and five, North Dakota State against 8-1 and one, Middle Tennessee. This is big. All right. What do we got here? By play type... Let's go get King Fraser in there. Okay, we're uh we're okay, we know Zeke, so we're waiting on number six. Oh shit. Alright, that did not work out very well. Alright, let's try something else. That did not work. What are your predictions for the Browns? Uh three, four wins, I'd say. Oh, oh! Why'd I do that? What's up, everybody in the chat? Fuck! I said my son got his immunization needle, so he doesn't get because uh, people think he gets autism. But with a throw like that, maybe you know, maybe I shouldn't have got my immunization needles. That was terrible. Bust out the second blue Mountain Dew. Hopefully, Brown is ahead of Julio. I have. Brown ahead of Julio on my list. I think Brown had a better season. Julio had a better playoffs, but Brown, um, AB had a better season. Get this shit out of here. So number set my pick. I think he's going to be number seven. I think they're going to put Julio at number 7. He should he should be next. I think the rest of the list is going to go Julio at Julio at 7. They're going to have Von Miller at 6. Where the fuck's Von Miller at? Von Miller should is not a top 5 player in the NFL. Um Yeah. Maybe Von Miller, Julio, Antonio. I think 1 and 2 are going to be Rodgers and Brady. On this list. What are your predictions for the Colts? Uh, I think they're gonna I don't know what what are the expectations? Not sure what the what the vibe is for the Colts this year. I think they're probably gonna underperform slightly. I don't think they did enough on the defense yet, but let's go. Good tackle. What up, Felipe? My name is Yes. Julio didn't have as many touchdowns and had 100 more yards. Plus, uh, what do you call it? Had more receptions. AB probably had what? Oh, it's a fumble! Fuck. Is Wentz better than Cousins? Yes, he is. Kirk Cousins has been in the league and started for, what, the last three years? Hasn't done... Has had decent passing yards, and that's it. How many playoff wins? Wentz will have, what's it been, three years since his Cousins been a starter. Wentz will have more playoff wins than Cousins in the next two years. Like, Wentz's first three years will have more playoff wins than Kirk Cousins. That makes him better. I saw that Wentz was 171. At least they made a thing about him. That's how you, that's how you know Curse Wentz is good. At least they made a little fucking clip. They didn't make anything else about... Picks 101 to 170. They had to show Wentz. Who will be the best sophomore next year? Um, I oh, I don't even know. He was really good as a, fresh, a freshman. I assume you mean sophomore in the NFL. I think Mike Thomas. Michael Thomas in New Orleans. I think he was really good last year. And now they've given him the vote of confidence that he's going to be their number one. Oh, shit. That was a little ambitious there. 
Brady's number six? There's no way. After what he did in the in the Super Bowl and the playoffs, Brady's Brady's number one. Plus the players respect Brady because he kind of takes on Goodell. Let's drop back. Let's scramble at the pocket. Oh, there's a Dowski miss. This guy only makes clutch catches. I'm against Iowa. I made a big time play. Let's fucking go. How do you win that jump ball? That DB got to make a play better than that. Ooh. He's got to jump by like a fucking white guy with a Polish last name. Let's get it. Sick gingerbread, man. That's fucking dope. You think Luck's a top five quarterback? Uh, fringe? Fringe top five? Who do you think all the worst record in the league next year? Jets. The Jets are trying to get... Yeah, the Jets are... It really does seem like the Jets are trying to lose. Let's take this one in. Let's take this one in. Oh, come on. The Jets are Jets are gonna win. They'll win like fucking week. They'll be like the Browns. Some teams just gotta rest their play. Like they're probably gonna play like the. I don't even know. I don't want to say the Patriots, but God, fourth. Oh, we're gonna kick the field goal. The way our defense has been playing, fucking pretty bad. The DJ Sanders making a nice play in the backfield. Will D Jacks do good with the Bucks? Totally. There we go. Ten nothing. What's your Eagles record prediction? Nine and seven wild card. They're a bet. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah. I'll stay. I'll stick with that. Nine and seven wild card. All right. So we're waiting on number seven in the top one hundred. So we got Matt Ryan at ten, Le'Veon at nine, and Zeke at eight. I think the next one's going to be Julio. Julio or Von Miller will be the next one. Do you think Jabril will be a bust? Too early to tell. You gotta, you gotta, I want to see how they're going to use him. Oh, uh, you got to... Come on. Is the NFC South the best quarterback division? Uh, Cam Newton, Drew Brees, Matt Ryan, Jameis Winston. Uh... I'd say, you know, that and the NFC... Oh, oh, not that many people bite on that shit. I'd say NFC East is pretty close, but I'd say yeah, you might have to... You know, Odell was 8, sorry. Odell was 8. Ryan, 10. Bell, 9. Odell, 8. And uh, Zeke at 7. Oh, I can't even say that. So we're on 6. 6 has to be Von Miller. Thoughts on Bashard Perriman next year. Think he's going to be a nice sleeper for fantasy football. He's a guy I'm definitely I'm trying to target in later rounds. Well, cause the same with the Redskins for long. Um, depends what the, the money's at. Derek Carr has set the market. Well, Washington. I hope. Well, I hope he does. Personally, I see Kirk Cousins as the guy that will never win the big game, and if he's going to cost the Redskins a crazy amount of money, it's great for me. It's just great for me. Thoughts on the Lions? Um. I think they're another team that I just don't know if they have enough pieces yet. And with Taylor Decker getting hurt on the offensive line, that's a big loss. Oh, my God. We are fucking biting on the play at the fucking read option. Hey, Beast Boy from North Dakota. Hey, no problem, man. Thanks for Carson Wentz. Thanks for Carson Wentz, and thanks for having the same weather to what I have in Canada. Go good tackle there. Do you think the NFC East will be a powerhouse? I don't know about a powerhouse, but I think after I think it will be the second most competitive division after AFC West. Oh, come on. Redskins are known for performing the lights of the brightest. But they fucking have owned the Eagles, man. 
Like you, like going into next year, you would have to debatably say the Redskins are the weakest team in the division. I'm still not confident that Philly's going to win both those games. There we go. Have the CPU stick with on the read option. All right, let's do that shit. It's just been such a long time. Like, this game here is back when, like, well, I mean, that is true. It's a big thing in college football. But, you know, from playing Madden 17, jumping back to this, I mean, the read options. You're not, it's something that if you're not used to it, you can fucking murk it. But we're doing well. I think that field goal is going to be key because they're still going to have to take some time off the clock. We should be able to get a possession and uh, eat a lot of that away. Our defense is playing very well. This is an explosive offense, Middle Tennessee. Oh, fuck. Come on, Kelly. Fat Raw's brother. Are the Eagles going to change Blunt's number back to 29? Um, maybe. I don't know who number 29... That was a turnover! I wasn't even paying attention! Let's go! How many years for the 49ers to be competitive? I'm going to say four. Get the... Oh! King Frazier's a beat. I love King Frazier, man. What we're going to do here, we're going to take the tempo and make it conservative, chew the clock. We just need to get this win. I mean, we're going to sim some of the games, so, I mean, we might not be able to turn around. But I think beating second place in the conference, that should be a tone setter for the, uh, the back end of the season. 49ers have a good front seven. If they get down, they have a chance to turn around. But, ah. Uh, they have a good front seven, but part of that front seven is a bunch of guys transitioning to a new defensive scheme. So there's uncertainty. Certainly the talent's there, but there's uncertainty. Oh my God, King Frazier. There's uncertainty. Can Armstead and uh, Buckner make that transition? Then you have Bowman, who's getting old as shit. Let's be honest. I, I think Bowman's as underrated as the next guy, but he's getting very old. And then uh, these, Richard Robinson looked like a nice player. Jimmy Ward's not bad. But I just think, I don't know, man. And then when they get Sam Darnold, by the time he's ready to come in his prime, Pierre Garçon is going to be, you know, 33, 35. I don't know. I don't see it. What do you think with the Niners drafting a quarterback, if they drafted a quarterback? Well, they're going to have to. They're probably going to have a top five pick next year. Well, let's go done. I'm going to say, uh, I don't know. Quarterback's tough. People have asked me in streams, like, how do I think is the best quarterback coming into next season? And it's, you know, it's it's up it's up for – they get, they got to play it out this year. It's not like, you know, previous year, Andrew Luck or Jameis Winston. Very much the QB is in for play. Who's going to be the best between Sam Darnold, between Josh Rosen, between Lamar – well, probably not Lamar Jackson. We got Josh Allen in Wyoming. Uh, Mason Rudolph. Number six. Let's get it in here. Can we get number six? It's going to be Vaughn Miller. Has to be Vaughn Miller. He has the intangibles, but he has the bad history of USC quarterbacks being booty. Being absolute booty. How well do you think the Colts will do with the addition of Malik Hooker? Um, again, got to wait and see. I don't know if their secondary is where it needs to be. Von, Ver, Von Day Davis did not look that good last year. And he's been like this... Oh, almost got to the edge. He's been like the saving grace of that secondary. Big day from King Frazier here. Kick the field goal. Let's end this game. Oh my God, this kicking... Boom! Game over! That's a big time upset. It's going pretty good, that random video guy, 98. Big game there for Miami. The upset over Florida State. Look at that Brad Kaya, four touchdowns. Doesn't want to get drafted in the sixth round to the Lions.
But they also drafted that corner in the second round. I forgot his name. Uh, Quincy Wilson. He's uh, he's Florida from Florida Gators. He's not bad. I don't think he's going to be an absolute game changer. Ah. What the fuck happened for them to get the ball there? Was not paying attention. Let's get that safety. Geis or Scarborough? Geis, 100%. What's your prediction for the Dolphins? Uh, probably 8 and 8. What is Khalil Mack ranked on your list? We're well, going to have to tune in tomorrow to see that. Top 10. He's top 10. Anyone got an update on who's number six? Are they, are they just like prolonging that shit? Oh, no. Oh, brick. We got Aguilar back there at defensive back. What are, what are you posting there, Sam? What, what is that? I don't know what that is. Go Gators. Hell yeah. Gator made. For some reason, the returner started running around and dove to catch the kid. What the fuck? Great play by that guy. But, man, I'm telling you guys right now, I hope you like NCAA. See some NCAA because this game is so much better. Like, I already expect, like, that's the reason why I want to find a way to play this during Madden 18. Because I just think Madden 18 is going to be a step back from Madden 17. I don't think it's going to be a bad game. It's just going to be a, eh. You graduate from Florida. Nope, never even been to the state of Florida. I'm Canadian. If I would have played football, I would have loved to go to Florida. I was uh, high school. Oh, there. Oh, come on, flag. What year would that have been? I would have been the uh, Urban Meyer. The first year after Urban Meyer would have been my first year of eligibility for college. I would have went there for sure. Try to rebuild. Try to put that team on my back. I'm a better running back than Matt Jones and uh, fucking uh, uh, maybe not Michael Lisley, but Matt Jones. I'm better than Matt Jones. Oh, he got murdered. What do you think about uh, the Lions taking Jared Davis? If he can stay healthy, he's going to be a, a, a stud. He's going to be an absolute stud. If he can stay healthy. I'm worried. NCAA games will be back soon. Maybe. I say, I'm thinking 2020. Number six is Aaron Rodgers. For the... Well, if you put the MVP at number... I don't know about that one. I think Aaron... Oh, shit. I think Aaron Rodgers is better than Von Miller. I think Aaron Rodgers is probably better than Khalil Mack. That's... Oh, that's kind of tough. I have Aaron Rodgers higher than that on my list. Aaron Rodgers is higher than number six. Let's just run it here. Get King Fraser a couple more padded stats. Nothing bad for the U, man. I don't mind you. I did a Miami Hurricanes dynasty way, way back in the day. Oh, let's 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 call a time out here and see if we can get King Fraser another touchdown. Give him some respectable stats. How much for a face reveal? I've done countless videos with my face in them. But you, you yeah, it wasn't a live time because when I do a face reveal and it's live, you guys get a free wet floor sign in case any females see it. Well, they're walking by, and they slip. A-Rod top three. I may agree with that. There we go. Big time win over Middle Tennessee. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we're going to three and five on the year. So we're starting to turn around here. Do I know Felipe Franks? I don't know him personally. But I'm well aware. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Felipe Frank start over Malik Zaire. So the, there's a, well, it wasn't the flashies of games here. 13 to nothing. But it's more so the uh, the implication. Of that Not not a great game from Easton Stick. But looking at that, I mean, Stock still did nothing. Running the ball. King Fraser show. 114 yards and a touchdown. Receiving yards. Erzin does get the crazy catch. Look at that. Richie James didn't do anything. No catches for Richie James. 
shutting out one of the most dynamic wide receivers in college. That gets you a 13-0 victory, baby. Let's go. I like you just because the 8th floor. It's a 7th floor crew. If your bitch only knew that she was getting fucked on the 7th floor. I bump that shit daily. I don't want Zaire to start. I mean, he was really good at North, uh, Notre Dame. If uh, I, I, I put it this way, I trust Coach McElwain. McElwain will pick the best guy. So I, I'm not going to go against this coach. So there we go. The 2-5 and five buys that knocked off the 8-1 and one Middle Tennessee. So we're 3-5. and five. They're 8-2. and two. And now we're going to next week against Florida Atlantic, who got big old Trey Hedrickson on the defensive line. He's good. I mean, if you're thinking long term for Florida Gators, I, you know, Flea Bay Frank starting this year, it's probably better long term. But if you're not ready, he's not ready. Wasn't he a, um, uh, it wasn't a Juco transfer, I don't think. But, I mean, if you think Malik Zaire is the guy that can win it, SEC East is up for grabs again. If Zaire can win us another SEC back three straight for Coach Mack, he's probably going to do that. It's better for his career. Helps you with uh, recruiting. How's the recruiting going? Well, let's check. We'll check out our final board. We've had a couple decent guys uh, commit. A couple frustrating lockouts. We'll look at that real quick. Zeke and Dak way too high. Yeah. I mean, worst case scenario. What was it? Dak? 14? That should have been as high as Zeke was. I could see Zeke because he's the number one running back, at least in terms of rushing yards last year. I can see Zeke being, okay, let's see. We got uh, a battle for a QB here. We got a left tackle, 79 commit. Leroy Stewart still there. Alex Adams is a big guy I want, and we're still in the recruiting battle. We lost the Canadian Reggie Snyder, which kind of sucks. We got a three-star prospect. So we got two and six Florida Atlantic. Let's simulate this. Marshall, we got the herd. We gotta be able to win this game. We fucking lost it. Unaccept. Ah. Oh. So frustrating. That means the only game we've won this year that wasn't simulating, or that was from simulating, was against FCS. The only other two wins were the games we played. Oh, fucking frustrating. But it, it is realistic. Let's be honest. If I was controlling this, we'd probably be 6-2. and two, and That's not really realistic for North Dakota State making that transition from FCS to FBS. But you expect a win against some of these divisional opponents. But Aaron Rodgers, yeah, back to the top 100. Aaron Rodgers at number 6. That's, I don't know, I disagree with that one again. Who do you think will be in the college football playoffs this year? Alabama. My gut saying Washington wins the Pac-12. Alabama-Washington... I don't think Clemson's going to make it. I don't think Florida State's going to make it. Don't I've seen a couple people saying Auburn might make it. Let's go against... Uh, we'll go. We'll sim to ECU. We'll play next week against ECU. As we got fucking every sim we're just going to lose. Um... Alabama, Washington... Maybe Notre Dame, or not Notre Dame, sorry, Penn State. Uh, SEC. We got our SEC rep. Who's in the ACC that's good? Clemson. Uh, could be Florida State just because Clemson kind of sucks. Unless Lamar Jackson does something crazy. Washington will get some hate, yes. But they still have, I mean, who did they lose? They lost two defenders. 
They lost Sidney Jones and Buda Baker. That's pretty much it on the defense. Offensively, they lost John Ross. But they still have Dante Pettis. They still have Miles Gaston. They still have Jake Browning. Offensive line still good. I think Washington's going to be good. Khalil Mack, number five. I think that's fair. That's a fair grade for Mack. What's not fair is Von Miller being higher. Von Miller is not better than Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack beat out Von Miller for Defensive Player of the Year. Oh, Kevin King. Yes, they did lose Kevin King, too. Explain to me. Just someone here explain to me that how Vaughn Miller is better than Khalil Mack. What's next week, actually? All right, we'll play these last two games for the streamers. We're 3-7, and seven, which is pretty damn disrespectful, if I'm being honest. ECU Pirates, so we're going up against Zay Jones. I'm going to have to make a tweet about that one. Let's see this Twitter here. You got the all right, making a post on the Zeke one. I don't know. Yeah, Vaughn Miller owns more chickens. That's probably about all he has. Where's Landon Collins? Landon Collins was twenty eight, I think. Von Miller is better than Khalil Mack at being in Madden commercials. Oh, yeah. I believe we'll receive that. Ryan O'Neill loves dicks. Nice little turn there, Bruce Anderson. All right, let's rock and roll. If Von Miller is higher than fucking... Like... The hell, man. That makes no sense. We just fucking... I'm trying to tweet about this... Just outrageous atrocities happening in the top 100. We got the goddamn shaky routes. Look, another feature Madden got rid of. That was so cool. Boom! Where's the anticipation? Hits the tight end across the middle. Let's go. Let's go to the side. Oh, let's go. The running attack is filthy. So he's the top four players in the NFL. Vaughn Miller, because clearly he has swag. Tom Brady, Julio Jones, Antonio Brown. 
Well, okay, at very least, Von Miller has to be number four. There's Von Miller in no realm is better than Tom Brady, Antonio Brown, or Julio Jones. Or is it? Oh, he drops it. That was a tough catch. Is Antonio Brown top four? Yes, he is. He's still there. Man, even the fucking playbook is better at NCAA 14. Right, East stick drops back. Good pocket. Throws X across the middle. Erzendowski, very solid hands. He's white. He'll probably get drafted by the Patriots. Keep your eye on Nick Fitzgerald. The name sounds familiar. I can't name what school he's from. Nick Fitzgerald. Is that Michigan? Let's go King Frazier right up the middle, baby. Stumbles up the blocks, but still falls forward for that first down. Go Y shake. Run the option. All right. Well, next play we'll run the option. We're gonna try to hit Carson Wentz's brother here. Oh, he gets open. High pass. Still gets the first down. Now let's see if we can hit him on the option. Mississippi State. That's it. Mississippi State. News and M. All right. Let's go read option just for that one guy. What up, Harrison? You know. Just overreacting to some top 100. Oh, and he reads it properly. Look at that. Easton stick goes in untouched for the five-yard rushing touchdown. Boom. This list is atrocity. That's why, everybody, tune into my live stream tomorrow night where I'll be doing my own top 100. have no idea how I'm going to format that video. To be honest with you, usually if I was editing it, at least have a graphic pop up. So if you're just trying to skim through it, I don't really know how I'm going to do that in terms of a live stream. Any suggestions? What I'm kind of thinking is I just go to like my player main. I'm going to like break down the top 10 players. Like I'll do 10 at a time. And then be I'm just going to go like, I'll list players 100 down to 90. And then after I do that, I'll play some sort of mini game. And I'll talk about why I rank those guys there. Maybe that's the way I could do it. I don't know yet. Triple option. I never actually fucked with the triple option. Triple option got too confusing. I didn't like having three options to potentially screw it up. We'll just leave that for, what's that, Georgia Tech. The triple option can stay in Georgia Tech. As Greg Maynard gets there for the sack. James Summers. That's a decent sized QB there. Tough to bring down. Second at 18. You bet you have a better slap shot. I don't know, man. I remember when I was in elementary school, I wasn't allowed to play. Uh, we had floor hockey, intramurals, and the the school said that a uh, letter to my parents because my slap shots are so hard that I wouldn't be able to play with everyone unless I stopped doing slap shots. That's all I had was a good slap shot. My wrist shot was pretty shit. A decent slap sh slapper, though. How thick? 6'6". Six, six. Sick thicks. When's the Jeffrey won't gel Giants will overperform again. Eagles go seven and nine and miss the playoffs. I don't know, man. Camp is camp, but it sounds like Carson Wentz and Alston Jeffrey are are meshing very well. Carson Wentz invited Alshon Jeffrey out to his goddamn cabin in North Dakota State. They're gonna be bonding. Put them in the description with a timestamp. That is true. That will take a lot of time, but that actually might be the best way of doing it. So I can just fucking just play a game. I'll probably let it sim a little bit. The timestamp is a good idea. Oh, that's a drop? Yeah, bonding. It'll be bonding. Not fucking bondage like what Dak and Zeke do or not fucking boat orgies with a boat full of dudes like Odell Beckham. We're going to go like men and go hunt in the fucking woods. That's what they're going to do. Number four is Antonio. Fucking Von Miller's higher than Antonio Brown? What? Von Miller wasn't even the best defensive player in the league. Von Miller wasn't even the best linebacker in the league. Von Miller top three? Get the fuck out of here. Von Miller's number one. They're going to make Von Miller. Watch that. Number one. 
Defensive players better than Von Miller. Khalil Mack, number five. Landon Collins, and I'm saying that as an Eagle fan. He was number 28. Aaron Donald's better than Von Miller, and he was 15. That is ridiculous. I hope all you guys that are in uproar tune in tomorrow for mine, because mine is much better. Oh, why was wide open. Oh, the juke! Wasn't even me juking. Do a top 100 stubs connected Francis mode. That could be pretty good. Uh, Vic Beasley, I kind of have... Uh, will Marcus Gold be on your list? Yes, he will. Vic Beasley is... I'm kind of conflicted with Vic Beasley. Because he's a pure out-and-out -out edge rusher. Was not very good against the run last year. So, I mean... Even, I'd had Von Miller over Vic Beasley. Because Vic Beasley, good guy to the quarterback, but can he drop back into coverage? Wasn't he playing outside linebacker? I think Von Miller is a more well-rounded player. But Von Miller over Antonio Brown. Khalil Mack, Aaron Rodgers. I don't know, man. Will Jordan Hicks be on your list? Yes, he will. A kicker made my list as well. I had a kicker on my list last year, which was my first year of doing it. And well, there's going to be another kicker here once again. Oh, lead him. There we go. Perkins, the veteran, the senior wide receiver, the 17 yard reception. Let's go read option. It worked great last time. Will Shazier be on your list? Uh, I can't remember if I did or not. Oh, and he reads the read option perfectly. Is Andy Dalton on the list? Andy Dalton did not make the list. In terms of Bengals, I think I got A.J. Green and maybe an offensive lineman. Is OBJ top 10? No, he's not. He's top 20. Will any Browns players be on the list? Maybe. Is David Johnson top 10? Yes, he is. Jake Frazier's a beat, like I said, man. This is why, like, I kind of regret rushing, in a way, the North Dakota State because if these were the current rosters and what I was going to use for my Madden 18, I would definitely have King Frazier be a guy. You may still see him. Like I said, we're still... I think he's a senior, though, which kind of sucks. I don't know exactly what's going on. I know there was a dude that's in the chats from North Dakota. You might actually know if King Frazier's still on the roster. I hope he is. I think he might be there for one more year. So hopefully we can rock and roll with King Frazier once again. Joe Thomas, yes. Joe Thomas made my list. You see, Adam Gates tried to get Peyton when Tannehill got hurt last year. That would, that would have never happened, though. Peyton Manning wanted to go it on top. He wanted to go it on top so people forgot that he was terrible in the playoffs for most of his career. Oh, Carter Wentz, touchdown. Let's go. Why can't this team play? Like this when I simulate. Number 12. Looking like Aaron Rodgers out there. Boom. Highest rookie on my list. Uh, 
Zeke. Zeke is the highest. Did Dak make your list? Yes, he did. That, I actually think I gave Dak a decent spot on my list. I'm being honest with you. King Fraser transferred from Nebraska to North Dakota. What? That's disrespectful right there, but hey, we can still use him. We'll remember King Fraser. I guess that means he's actually pretty damn good in real life. Looking at their stats, though, when I was making this, uh, Lance Dunn, the backup, actually had more yards, so clearly he probably was like, fuck this, I'm leaving. And Lance Dunn's going to be the starter. But hey, that means we can use King Frage. Oh, you got to pick that off! Stafford is on the list. Yes, he is. Is Jordan Howard top 50? Uh, he's close. I heard LeVar Ball is on WWE. My buddy just sent me a text message. I have to fucking download it or something. I heard it was fucking hilarious. Like, took his shirt off and shit. Go Maynard. Man, there's definitely a couple players from the North Dakota State that I probably would uh, import. Like Nick DeLuca, Greg Maynard. I'd probably bring King Frazier. Easton Sticks got to get drafted. There are people saying Easton Sticks be the next Wentz and go from North Dakota State. Probably be a first three-round pick in uh, two years' time. Oh, fuck off, man. Like, I'm there to tackle the player, and the animation just doesn't fucking make it, man. Is Howard in top five of running backs? I think I ranked him six. I rated my running backs from yards from scrimmage. I did the combined yards from scrimmage and touchdowns. Where, and I guess, you know, still a little bit of overall. Oh, my God. What fucking bad coverage that is. Big baller brand will be successful. I don't think it will be successful, to be honest. I think it's going to fade away. But it's entertaining as shit. I hope it does. Some guy said Elliot should be number one. Yeah, we all know Cowboy fans are smart. That's what they're known for, right? How many Vikings? Ah, oh, fuck off. Zay Jones, he's a beast. You can only contain him. It's only a matter of time they make a play. Uh, I know Xavier Rhodes is there off the top of my head. I don't know if I can't remember if I put Stefan Diggs or not. The line didn't make it. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have Rhodes, Danielle Hunter, and Everson Griffin for Vikings. I can't remember if I put Everson Griffin. He might have been like number 101. I remember he might have been one of the last cuts, but I think I have those three. King Frazier's currently undrafted free agent. Oh, let's go, Anderson! Oh! Yeah, baby. Woo! I don't know how to taunt, and I'm not going to do it because sometimes you'll just, like, run out of bounds. 100 yard return! King Frazier and undraft. I'm going to have to use King Frazier in my next fucking Madden video if he's actually, like, an undrafted free agent. Let's see. Undrafted, yeah, King Fraser, undrafted Fraser. There it is. Jesus. Any for no 49ers, fortunately. As Doug Peterson makes the kick. Four six seven. Well, he's like 220, 225. He's a bigger back. Do you follow baseball? I fucking hate baseball. How many Lions? Uh, I know off the top. I don't have my list at the top of me. I was working on it all last night. Stafford for sure. Maybe Darius Slay? Maybe? Which of the first round receivers will have the best rookie season? Ah. Uh, I might have to go with John Ross just because I think he's going to have a bigger role than the other two. Jordan Howard, 161? He was second in rushing yards as a rookie.
That makes no sense. Oh, that's a good pass. Good D. I should do an MLB the show with Mr. Hurricane. Yeah, because I know nothing about baseball. Excel. I just be where the fuck is Barry Bonds? Give me Mark McGuire. I don't know baseball players from the nineties. Back when everyone used steroids and it was actually good. The UTEP running back number one, yeah. You think Ross will get more touches than Boyd and LaFell? I do. I think he'll separate the field. He's gonna be a start. I think he'll be the he'll start out as the second starter uh, outside. Personally, if he stays healthy, that's a big thing. Maybe not, though. I mean, LaFell, I don't think LaFell can play slot. I think Boy will be their slot wide receiver. Maybe not. He might start as the, the, the top depth guy. Good play by Dempsey. Trey Dempsey make a nice play. Should do an MLB Chip Kelly rebuild. Just try to get Barry Bonds. All uh. Hey, we're containing Zay Jones in this episode, this game here, which is all I can ask for. Howard or Cook in the NFC North of the future. Jordan Howard. I, I think Jordan Howard's a better runner. Which Division One school has the worst football program? Uh, North Texas. The Mean Green. Oh, no. Oh, no. Unacceptable. That was weak. Bad play. Oh, look at this. Fucking, look at the corner. Over, like, just behind the play, then he runs off. Oh, fuck, man. Will there be a WWE connected franchise mode? Yes, there will be eventually. That's gonna it'll be a stream, and it's gonna be a stream where there's beers involved. Because it's such a dumb idea. And UAB did come back. I think they'll be back uh, next year to try to come back as a program. Packers record for next season. Uh, Eleven and five. Oh come on, Connor Wentz. I don't. I still think their defense is not as hot as some people are thinking. I think their defense still has some weakness, but uh, uh, adding Martellus Bennett tight end, I think that's a great move. Is JJ Nelson the best UAB prospect? Uh... He's the best UAB prospect I can think of off the top of my head. That wasn't there a running back that transferred from UAB that was really good. Got drafted. Oh, they're bringing the blitz. Oh, come on, King Frazier. You gotta get that one. Is Ryan Matthews getting cut? Yes, he is getting cut. It's only a matter of time. There's no way that with the team that's as tight with the cap as the Eagles, unless he has a massive restructure, $4 million in cap gets freed if you get rid of him. Great punt. So we're sitting on number three. I'm actually going to lose my shit if Von Miller's not number three. Von Miller, Antonio Brown, Brady. That's going to be the top three. Number three is Von Miller. Fucking ridiculous. Number three is Julio. Number three is Julio Jones. Von Miller is the second. <laughs> oh man, they're making it. Von Miller better be number one. That's all I'm saying.
Von Mil What? That's crazy. That is absolutely fucking crazy. Von Miller number two. He might not even be number two. Is he even on number two yet? Exactly. You might as well just say, screw it, let's put him ahead of Brady just for the clicks. When did NFL Network become like ESPN? This top 100 list is about as bad as my defense is playing right now. Will someone stop Zay Jones, please? Plot twist, he's not on the list. Aaron Jones is now number one. I, I, you know, makes sense. What if Jordan Hicks is, yeah, that's what they should do. Jordan Hicks low key number one. Excuse me. He just got married too. That, that boy having some loud sex. Have you been watching Confederations Cup? No, it's not on TV here in Canada. How do you drop that? Philly didn't trade for Wentz. What player would you want to pick? Well, personally, when they traded up for Wentz, I low-key wouldn't have been pissed if we got Jalen Ramsey. Uh, so they would have been sitting at, what, 11? 8 or 11 or something like that? I don't know. You aren't missing much. I would have liked to watch Chili play just to see how, you know, the GOAT Alexis Sanchez is playing. Oh, bat it down. I mean, we don't even have a short QB. Come on. Vaughn Miller's rated higher than your grandpa's blood sugar. Hilarious. Diabetes joke. Shout out to Diabetes. Fuck me. We have to scramble. Let's go for it. Can we get out? Can we get out of bounds? We're getting pretty close to field goal range. If we hit the corner strike. We'll be all good. Thoughts on Kevin King? Big good fit for the uh, for the Packers. Oh, there we go, Perkins. Let's kick this field goal and go in a half. Too long for my kicker? Do they not know that I'm the best field goal kicker on YouTube? How oh, big of a field goal is it? Max power, let's go! Oh, fuck off. There we go. UTEP getting bodied by Tulane on the ticker. That's always good to see. Giants record next year. Um, eight and eight. 
I will say I am more worried about the Giants than I am the Cowboys next season, as an Eagles fan. They, they probably are the most well-rounded team in the division. I just kind of think Eli Manning's over the hill now. Vaughn Miller's number two. Well, I knew Tom Brady was going to be number one all along, but Vaughn Miller being number two is a joke. More like two chickens, am I right? Thanks, Luke Thomas. Love you too, boo. There we go. Make a nice tackle there by Allison, Jalen Allison. Probably the best corner on North Dakota State. Thick boy. Kelsey Monroe Thick. There you go. Good shout. Mia Malkova Thick. Boy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you right now, I have Vaughn Miller on my list at number 11. That's where he made it. Number 11. Spoiler alert. Defense, man. Fuck. Are you as sick as your GF? Close. Pretty close. Some may say. Depends. Depends what kind of angle you're looking at. Everyone knows. Especially for like bodybuilders, it's all about the peaks and angles. What's kind of lighting you got, you know? It's a drop pass. There we go. Good play. Philip Nelson's having one hell of a game here for ECU. This will be the final game, though. We have one more game against ranked Southern Miss. We'll probably, I gotta fucking get out of here. So, I mean, this is already a fucking shit show. This is gonna be probably the most competitive game you're gonna see. How dare I disrespect? <laughs> How dare I disrespect the number two best player in the NFL like that? Oh, come on, Ambrosius! Von Miller. Von Miller might have just made himself a meme tonight. Maybe. Jump that! Come on. How the hell is Southern Miss ranked? I don't know. They're steamrolling. We'll take a quick look at the, uh, what do you call it after this, though? This will be the last gameplay, but we'll look at everything else. The records, the standings, Heisman. So we wrap this shit up, and then starting tomorrow... Well, actually, I still gotta record pink slips for tomorrow. But, um, I can start working on the actual real college rosters. It's gonna be dank memes, fellas. Dank memes! Do I hate the Packers? No, I don't mind the Packers. Definitely don't like the Packers, but I don't mind them. Let's look at this studio update here. That's not a that's not a typical Baylor game, but rank Baylor goes down. Big game for Mason Rudolph. Kate Upton smash or pass? Smash! For sure. Not as thick below as I'd like, personally. But still a thick bitch. Oh! Oh! Man, Bruce Anderson has been a beast for us. Must be getting close to 200 return yards in this game. Let's go. Let's see what Coach... Let's see what Coach Tyson Max suggested. You sick as my mama's homemade pudding? Uh, Depends. Can you eat it with a straw? If so, big, better, thicker, juicier, more voluptuous. So we him with the read option here again. Oh, they had that one red. Man, their defense is doing decent. Thoughts on Jamal Williams? Definitely be worth a flyer in fantasy football. That's about all I could say. 
I think Packer running backs are going to be tough this year to read. Almost as tough as the Lions running backs. And the bite on the play action. Oh, he, oh, there we go. Good catch. Had to adjust. Wasn't the best throw, but he makes the catch. Ryan Tannehill's wife smash. Oh, smash for sure. God, you guys are giving me fucking layups here. Do I eat ass? Only when I'm starving. Oh, come on. Yeah, the edge there. That should have been a first down. NFL top 100 list. I, like I said, I have the, cons the conspiracy theorist in me thinks it's ran by the agents. K. Williams. K. Adams, don't even have to ask. Who do I have as Broncos starting running back? Gotta be... Man, C.J. Anderson's good. Oh, the quarterback's out! Strain back for Summers. We might have a chance. Throw it away. The starting QB was ra fucking raping us. Russell Wilson's wife. Pretty sure Russell, Russell Wilson's wife has, has a dick. So I'm gonna go ahead and say uh, pass. Man, I just saw a picture of LeVar Ball. Thick. He's a thick bitch. Oh, let's go Easton Stick. Mobile QB cheese in NCAA. Good scramble, Easton Stick. All right, let's start getting the clock here a little bit. Now, especially with their quarterback out of the game. I think we want to try to try to get this shit here. I think Jamal Williams is going to be a beast or bust. He's going to be Zeke. He's not going to be Zeke. I think, you know. Like I said, start. Oh, uh, no. Throw it away. Starting running back. I mean, running backs is a tough spot to call with Green Bay. Just, just when push comes to shove, they're going to abandon the run. And try and uh, try and throw the ball. I think he'd be out serviceable. Jen Selter or Garcia? Selter, because I'm pretty sure Garcia has a fake ass. Boom! Easy. GG. Easy, boy. Amy Schumer's a fucking fat, joke-stealing pig. Let's go, boy! EDP? EDP all day. Hey, why isn't the fucking NFL Network posted number two yet? Are you guys Josh me? Hey, big win for Temple Owls. Let's go. PJ Walker, big game. This is a good game, let's be honest. But most of you guys usually never watch the fucking game, but this is a solid performance here. Good battle. North Dakota State ECU. Zay Jones going off. Much like he probably will go off if he stays healthy with the Bills this season. Pick these balls off. Andrew, the quote was, why would you want to do it who doesn't believe in dinosaurs? That was the quote. Amy Schumer's definitely my top... Oh, Amy Schumer's gross. Like, not even trying to be rude. She just actually reminds me of Miss Piggy. That'd be a pass. You have to show your new sliders. Go to um, operationsports.com. They, it's the best fucking form for any of this shit. It was the top sliders I got there. If you've never checked operationsports.com, it's good for Madden. It's good for NCAA. That's where you can download good roster files. They have the best sliders. It's a really good connected franchise mode community. Not really active there, but, you know, I stop in. Check on Mark Gawinski. Oh, come on. They have the backup in. They just got to throw slants and check downs. You know who Layla Starr is? Yes, I do. I knew who Layla Starr was before she got plastic surgery and fake ass. Oh, gee. Iowa takes down Michigan State. Someone is watching the ticker. Let's go. Shout out for that commitment. 
Flying Spaghetti Scientology Towers <laughs> Hilarious. Oh, he made a miss! Oh, with the juke! Bruce Anderson, third running back, is having one hell of a day. But now ECU with the backup quarterback, we might have a chance to get some solstice here in our season. Finish off on a high note. Top three religions? None, no religion. Religion is stupid. I don't hate you if you think, you're, if, relig if you're religious, I'm not going to be that guy. It's like, ah, oh, you believe in God? But I just think religion is stupid. All of them. But hey, if you need religion to be a good person, that's you, bro. I believe in the, the religion of football on Sundays. That's my religion. The Lord is Timothy Tebow. Oh, we're trying to go for the shovel pass? Yeah, raise me, like I said. That's the worst thing. Almost, in my opinion, even though I'm not religious, I think religion is stupid. It's it's equally bad the people that shit on people that are religious because they're religious as, you know, they're the same. Boom. Oh, there we go. Here's a Dowski. Football on Sundays. Uh, definitely sp flying spaghetti monster. I remember there was a kid in grade eight when I was in grade eight that was that was hardcore into that. He was also like a clowny, like he he was super into like like circus shit. It was fucking hilarious. Oh come on, that's a good play. Good play by that ninety nine. Elvis Presley's son, Frederick Presley. What do you call a pig that steals? Amy Schumer. Ah! Ah! Get it? Ah! Miller is number two. Thank God. Let's go. Come on. Let's just grind this clock up. I have no... I have no... Uh, I don't need to make it super flashy. I, was, I thought it was going to be Jordan Hicks all day long. I thought they were just going to surprise me and make Jordan Hicks number two. He's number two because he has swag. As much as that sounds like a joke, I honestly think that's a big part. Like, there's like, he's in commercials, you know? You got fucking, uh, you got commercial swag. Oh, Easton Stick takes it on the handoff. See that push in the back by the offensive lineman on that play? And man, that's a penalty. They give you that stupid block in the back penalty that I hate. Favorite commentary YouTuber? Oh, there we go. Touchdown for King Frazier. The, the beast from this series, let's be honest. He's now an undrafted free agent. Someone's going to get this guy some love. Someone watch the goddamn waiver wire and if King Frazier gets picked up by somewhere, even if it's at the CFL, let me know. I need to get myself a King Frazier jersey. Uh, I don't really have a favorite. I, like I said, obviously, uh, Param Crow is pretty good. I like Param Crow. He's a cool guy. Mr. Hurricane's the OG. I don't like all the things Mr. Hurricane does, but he's good. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Really know about anyone else. WWE 2K18 series. I can do a WWF No Mercy on the N64 series emulator if you want. That is my game. I will body bag anyone in that game. That's one of the games I'll take it to my grave that I can dominate. Just take over. Favorite CFL team? Don't watch it. Uh, probably BC Lions because they had cool jerseys. And they used to have a really good quarterback. Was, I can't remember his fucking name. Casey Printers, was it? I don't know. I think Winfield. 
Man, it's going to be tough for anyone in Minnesota to go in the first round. I think, like, from small schools, one of the big small school prospects is the guy from uh, North Carolina. Uh, fuck's his name? The defensive end from, uh, is it North Carolina State? North Carolina State, the defensive end. Can't remember his name on the top of my head, but he's really good. Maynard, oh, fuck, man. Doug Flutie, CFL GOAT. Beard Mobox, yeah, he's good. Haven't watched his stuff in a while, but when I found him one time, because it was a recommended video, so his stuff's good. I know he's on Xbox, too. He's a guy I would like to collab with, too, down the road, because I know he's on Xbox. What college team of any year could beat the 2008-0-16 Lions? None. No college team will ever beat an NFL team, but... I would say, what's the most dominant college team I've seen? Fucking, hmm. Give me the, give me the, uh, 08 Gators. I don't know, man. Uh, none, none. That, that's my answer. None. Oh, we're getting pressure. Fourth and 21. Photo became a free agent, wants to go to the Eagles. Would you be happy? Of course I'd be happy. I still wouldn't like him. Wouldn't definitely would not hate him because he's on the Eagles. But I wouldn't. He'd not be a. I wouldn't get his jersey or anything like that. Like even when To was on the, I wasn't a big fan of To before he came. There we go. Turnover. That probably should have been pass interference on me. But uh, I wasn't a big fan of To when before he came, and I still wasn't a huge fan after he, after he left. Von Miller could beat the 0-18 Lions. According to this list, Von Miller could beat the 0-16 Lions. Beer Mobux on PS4. Oh, well then go fuck that. Fuck himself then. And there's the victory. Victory. Anyone get that? Anyone know that, that line? Victory. Who says victory? Give you a hint from uh, Entourage. Texas Longhorns were good. I don't know if they were that good. Super well-rounded. All these highlights. All these graphics. GFX. Um, T.O. did get stiffed on the Hall of Fame. Yes, he did. That was rough. Would you get an OBJ jersey? No, I would not. I do need to get a new jersey, though. Uh, I just recently, I've been a big guy getting the fake China jerseys, but that's, I couldn't deal with that shit anymore. So I bought a real Wentz jersey, but now I only have like, I want to get three real jerseys of every color. So I, I have a green Wentz. I'm going to hundred percent. I'm getting, I want to get a black Dawkins and then I need a white jersey. I'm kind of leaning towards Jordan Hicks, but Eagles jerseys are the worst to buy because you never know if they're going to be on the team, uh, later. All right, so let's go to number... Th Man, Southern Miss is number 13? That's ridiculous. All right, we're going to simulate the game against Southern Miss, and then we'll wrap this series up just kind of looking at, you know, who plays where. Oh, you know, you know, we'll just do all that stuff, the miscellaneous stuff. This is a Kodak Black. No, that guy looks real weird. Order off... TTE room. Does it hit PayPal though? That's the biggest thing. I remember like money, like I need PayPal. Back in the day, you could use PayPal for everything. Jordan Fix. Should be his nickname. That'll be his meme nickname. Jordan Fix it. Fuck. Brady, yeah, Brady's obviously number one. The Dabbers now worship Von Miller. That is actually a great... Like, the kind of people that think that were like big Cam Newton fans would love Von Miller. It's the swag rating. No, but they come. I'll check it out. This sim does take fucking forever. I hate that. Let's see, we missed out on a couple... Oh, Alex Adams went to Colorado? That's disappointing. King Frazier had a tryout with the Chiefs and Big Red. Look, 
Fucking undefeated Southern Miss, 11 and 0. All right, let's uh, we'll sim this one. That's gonna be a rough game, anyways. We'll go. Uh, we'll just go right to the conference championship. Might as well get all the stats in. We're gonna get bodied. We won! Oh my god! Look at that! Couldn't beat fucking any of the other teams. Eleven and zero Southern Miss. We win thirty to seven. Holy shit. We should get the Central USA title. Just because we beat the two... Oh my... 37? We beat Southern Miss and we beat Middle, Middle Tennessee. That makes no sense at all. Finishing 5-7. and seven. Couldn't beat fucking Florida Atlantic. Florida International. Rice. Got bodied by Rice. And we beat... Undefeated 11 ranked Southern Miss. The fuck? Pardon my French, but this shit's whack, bro. Alright, so once we get out of the sim here, this takes forever. We'll go to get a recap of that Southern Miss. We'll look at the Heisman. We'll look at the final standings, and then we'll wrap this shit up. Because, like I said, these, these streams can't go over two hours, or else shit gets a little fucky. When they try to get uploaded to my uh, to my base channel. For anyone that missed out. Plus we gotta go play some Overwatch. But yes. What a fucking upset. That's like one of the biggest upsets we've seen on the channel. If the Packers got Julio, let's say tomorrow. What do you think the record would be? 13-3 uh, and three maybe. You might get them one more win. Still doesn't help their defense. We got a couple decent commits there. I just fucking skip right past because why not? But five and seven is not a bad record if you're looking at it in terms of of realism, I guess, from a team coming from FCS, FBS. Five and seven would be considered a successful season, especially considering we beat the top two teams in our conference. Uh, let's look at here. Let's look at the top conference standings or uh, the score. Sorry. Look at that. Week fourteen was it? Thirty to seven. It's a rivalry game for some reason. North Dakota State, Easton Stick, got pulled. Well, he had 53 yards, one touchdown. Growing the ball, King Frazier being a monster, 95 yards. Easton Stick looks like he got hurt or something like that. Three to three field goals for our kicker. Shepard with that, that's pretty good. Defensively, we got a sack there. We had two picks from Jalen Allison. That's pretty good. Bad turnovers. Let's what the fuck what happens? Scoring? We have scoring here. We got a touchdown. We got a run from Morlock, the fullback, a field goal. Fucking Davis quarterback run. Field goal, field goal. What a clinical performance in the upset of the season. Overwatch main. Uh don't have a main. I have a main for every category. So I'm not that guy that just locks in with anyone. Favorite character, I'd say uh Tracer. Bastion, Diva, and Zenyatta. I can play all those guys pretty well. Alright, look at the top 25 polls. Ohio State number one, 12 0. We got Alabama, Clemson, Ole Miss. I guess that's kind of surprising. Being at number four, UCLA, Washington, Wisconsin. Wisconsin I guess that's a little high for Wisconsin. Louisville did well. LSU did well without a quarterback. Oklahoma, Baylor, Florida 9 and 3. That's hey, number 12 for Florida. We'll take that. Stanford, Florida State, AM, Houston, Penn State. That's pretty bad for Penn State. Being all the way down there at 17. 11 and 1 Western Michigan, Texas, Tennessee. Southern Miss, obviously the big surprise. Let's be honest. Arizona's Navy, Georgia Tech, Miami. 9 and 4 Georgia Tech, 8 and 4 Georgia Tech gets ranks. That's that's kind of crazy. All right, let's look at the Heisman. So the top five for the Heisman, we have Deshaun Watson, Miles Gaskin, JT Bear, Chad Kelly, and Leonard Fournette. Not bad there. Uh, I'm not sure if the simulation here will take us to the, uh, I guess we go look at award finalist. Comp tier, I'm platinum. I'm a platinum player. 
Very close to Diamond every year. Never get it because I just fucking can't get a streaky in that game. So the Maxwell went to Deshaun Watson. Any, any surprise? Steve Skyler Howard at number three is kind of surprising. Greg Ward, Josh Dawes. Stock still from Middle Tennessee. You got Walter Camp, Deshaun Watson, Beg Narek, Aaron Springs, Nagurski, this guy, Greg Gaines, Walker, Litnikoff, Mackey, Oatland, Remington, Lombardi, best linebacker, Ben Ballware, Thorpe, Springs, big year from him. And then grows to Andy Phillips. I guess we probably look at the stats here. How do I find the University of Miami series? Search. It's old as shit. That's like a couple years ago. Do we have all? Let's see what kind of crazy stats we got here. We got uh, not a lot. Not a, no, no real crazy air raid numbers. 3,900 passing yards for Luke Falk. We got 36 touchdowns, 9 picks from Deshaun Watson. 34 and 12 from Dane Evans. Rosen, 33 and 11. Chad Kelly, 32 and 6, is looking pretty good. Greg Ward, 29 and 2. In terms of running the ball, McCaffrey, 1,615 touchdowns. Uh, leading the league in touchdowns as well. Receiving, you got Ronnie Moore from Bowling Green with 90 receptions. Gabe Marks, 1,400 yards. Keevan Lucas. 13 touchdowns, 50 pancakes from Air Force. Defensively, Calvin Munson and Errol Clark with leading tackles. Greg Gaines, the D-tackle from Washington, 11 and a half sacks. We got any ones I know? Bradley Chubb is the guy I was thinking of too. I was thinking about low-key small school prospects to watch. Elijah Qualls, now a Philadelphia Eagles, 7 and a half sacks. We got uh, 10 picks from Aaron Springs. Pretty damn good there. All right, let's look at our stats, and then we'll wrap this up. <clears throat> so for the season, North Dakota State for passing. Easton Stick, 1,500 yards, 13 touchdowns, 12 picks. Fairly disappointing. Run the ball, the Beast King, Frazier, 1,100 yards and 7 touchdowns. Pass stats not that good. Darius Shepard, 400 yards, four, almost 500 yards, five touchdowns, 539 and two for Urzadowski. Defensively, we got 58 tackles from Stumpf. We got six and a half sacks from Gray Maynard. We got four picks from Jalen Allison. And our kicker was shit. Our kicker was shit. So, that being said, I'm going to see if I can simulate here to the next week. Let's go right to the end of bowl season and see who wins it all. I think that's the least we can do as we will wrap up this stream. So has Brady officially been number one yet? The thing obviously just ended, so they clearly gave Brady number one, right? Uh, excuse me. Oh, this sim takes forever. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, so tomorrow night, we will be doing my top 100 live stream. Plus, I think there will be a uh, Pink Slips episode coming through at the day. Didn't get polio today. Dude, to me, man, my kid got his, uh, uh, his, um, what the fuck those are called? Immunization shots. He got two of them. I think one of those for polio. One's for, like, the mumps and measles, and one's for polio. That's why this is a live stream and not an actual upload for the evening. But good for you. Jays live in Elmira. Shout out for that. Round of applause for not getting polio. JT Barrett won the Heisman Trophy. 43 total touchdowns is pretty good. Steelers record prediction. 10-6. Uh, 
What would you do for work if you didn't make YouTube videos? I, uh, I don't know how personal I want to get in, but I had a pretty, I, I, have, I used to have a really good job that wasn't very fulfilling. All right, let's look here. How the fuck did I see this? Scores and schedules, maybe? It's going to show me what happened. Let's see. Oh, these guys got bowl games. We didn't get a bowl game. UTEP got a fucking bowl game, and we didn't. Middle Tennessee got... Jesus. All right, where's the national championship? Capital One Bowl, Alabama, Nebraska. We got Ole Miss over Wisconsin in the Rose Bowl. Yes, the bowl is one-sided. Sugar Bowl looked decent. Cotton Bowl. Orange Bowl, that would have been a great game to watch. 41-24 for Clemson. And the national title, Ohio State went over UCLA in a battle of JT Barrett versus Josh Rosen. 35-30, an all-time classic. Let's look at this. Oh, what the fuck? Well, let me look at it. Let me look at, let me look at this game. Game stats, thank you. I don't want to... No, game stats. Look at this, more info. There we go, this is what we need it. Who had a good game? JT Barrett, four touchdowns, three picks. Mike Weber, good, 162 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, not a great game there. Defensively, Dante Booker, 12 tackles. All right, what was going on for UCLA? Clean game from Josh Rosen, 254 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. Adams here, 107 yards, two touchdowns. Defensively, what do we got? Mike Yarez, eight tackles, two picks. Still couldn't get it going here. Randall go fourth on the Eagles right now. Eddie Vanderdoss, a couple big names. Tack McKinley, four tackles, nothing in terms of sacks. Uh, you bet I was a point star, maybe. Yeah, very surprising. I guess Ohio State person. How did they win that? Let's look at the scoring here. Touchdown, touch, 7 14. I don't know, man. Let's. Two touchdowns to two field. I guess UCLA couldn't punch it in. All right. That should do it here. Thank you for watching the finale of season one of the North Dakota State Bison. Will it return? Maybe. But this is only the beginning of NCAA 14 content here on Beast Mode TV. So uh, starting soon, we'll have a lot more content. But thank you guys all for watching. As always, tomorrow we'll be doing our Top 100 Players live stream. It's going to be pretty lit, let's be honest. So tune in for that if you can. And until next time, guys, it's C4 saying peace out.